don't know why we have two of these. Probably just to make it harder. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, clearly, it's about to be an excellent day. Oh, yeah. Somebody managed to try to launch the entirely the wrong way. Right, let's make sure it's actually going. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the attendance code is going to change. Maybe. Looks like no. That's nice. All right. That looks more correct. All right, so getting started. Apologies for the delay. Um, Twilight in the term is not on the slide. Uh, so, let me look up. Let me know what the date of the term is off the top of their head. Or 16th? Okay, so it's the 16th. Um, what I do want to mention here, though, is that um, you know, if you have any challenges with uh, you know handwriting. Or you know, kind of pressure, you know, real time uh, doing tests, that kind of thing. There are combinations. Um, if there is kind of a, a strong reason for it, uh, you should contact. And this is I always mention this: the Office for Disability Services. Okay, that is also just accommodations. Uh, but you should contact them. Then they go through some sort of validation process of which I know nothing. And then they will formally be able to have you uh, send something to myself and Rohan. So that we can make any accommodations that we need to in order for you to take the midterms. Uh, you probably have already done this if you fall into this category, um, but uh, you know, just let us know. But in order for us to like actually respond, please get that information to us by the 11th, uh, which I think is like a week before the midterm. Um, then we can actually, you know, figure out a way to do the accommodation, whatever that might be. So that it's the 18th, right? I did remember it correctly. Look at that. Uh, okay, so it's the 18th. Um, I am normally terrible with dates, so that's why I always write it down and don't look it up. I thought I had put it down this slide. Uh, so three weeks from today, and so next uh, two weeks from today, please have any accommodation requests in so that we can uh, make sure we can do something about it. Um, if you haven't found any of uh, like your group at all or any members of your group, please contact Rohan, CC me. Uh, he has been the keeper of the group lists, okay? But you should all be in a group. You should all be working on certain things as a group uh, and not other things. Um, so the other thing today is the project one checkpoint is due today. No, due Thursday. Now I'm all screwed up on dates because I'm all confused. So today is Tuesday. So it's due on Thursday. Uh, at 11:59, uh, uh, and then it's due uh, com in complete, no, completely due uh, next Thursday at 11:59. All right, one more pitch for the mini hack, which is this coming Saturday. Uh, if you want to participate, you have to sign up by 5 p.m. today. Uh, so, you know, don't do it in class if you don't mind, but you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, by 5 p.m. today, uh, one the thing that I don't think I mentioned before, we're actually doing like a training class kind of uh, tomorrow from 6 to 8 p.m., uh, which will give you a little bit of introduction to web development and maybe API calls, a little bit of Git, uh, so that so anyone who's participating in the mini hack, there is this like two hour kind of advanced tutorial that um, to kind of prepare you uh, for the mini hack. So if you have no idea, 
um, it might be good to come to the thing on Wednesday. You will get more details if you register by 5 p.m. today. Um, but in short, it's tomorrow at 6 o'clock, uh, just so you know what it is. Any questions? Okay. All right. So um, I need to find a, a, like a new picture uh, that kind of shows this. Uh, but this one's so good that it's really hard uh, to find a new one. Um, so this was uh, quite a few years ago now, right? Because uh, Bush has not been president for quite a while. Um, but this was on Fox News. And uh, basically what you see here in this picture, right, is that if those tax cuts expire, clearly a bunch of people will have a lot more taxes that they have to pay, right? Except not really, right? Because what they did was, and I know that it's a little grainy, um, they zoomed way in, right? And so they have, this is, uh, I want to say 34 to 42 is the scale over here on the y-axis. So this is what it actually looks like, if you get it like in context. So this, we've talked about this a little bit uh, in a prior lecture. Um, as you can tell, I'm great with dates. So I just know it was sometime before today. Uh, beyond that, I have nothing. Um, so, as you can see, this is another good example in public media where someone has said, I'm going to try to prove a point by mucking with the presentation data, right? The data is still the same. It's still correct, technically speaking, but they're mucking with the presentation to try to give you a different uh, feeling about it or a different impression than is actually the case. Does that make sense? All right. So, uh, distributions we are talking about. Uh, well, we're going to kind of rehash uh, some of the definitions. Uh, so individuals um, whose features are recorded. So individuals may or may not be people, right? It's the individual thing that you are measuring when you're doing some sort of study or, you know, distribution or whatever. So the individuals are the, are the items or the things or the whatever you want to call it. Um, but the formal term is individual. A variable, this is the thing that you are looking for. And this is why we tend to use um, kind of when we're talking about like Python or data science, we tend to use like a term, we try to find a way to use not the word variable because variable has a very distinct definition as an attribute of, uh, you know, an individual that's important. Um, and, you know, but we also use the term variable to be, you know, what we were calling a name in Python. So. Name collision, both of them are correct. Both of them have our formal definitions. They just mean two different things depending on context. All right, so values can be numerical or categorical. Um, and each individual has exactly one value of the variable. Uh, and then the distribution is that for each distribution value of the variable, the frequency of individuals that have that value is what we mean by distribution. Um, so you probably have informal definitions of what most of these words mean, right? You, they are English words, they're commonly used. Um, but these are kind of our formal definitions uh, for when we talk about them in terms of data science. All right. And remember the slides get posted after class. Uh, it's showing me the answer. I didn't used to do that. Uh, so what can values be? Numerical, category, categorical, neither, or either? So numerical, categorical, none of the above, or all of the above, except not quite above. All right, it was interesting, almost complete. I'm closing it. And I can tell how many times I've actually hit it. All right. So the correct answer was either be numerical or categorical, or the term values can refer to either one. Um, and that's all we're going to say about that for now. All right. So distributions of categorical variables. And so we move on to our. Wait. We didn't already do this lecture, right? Okay, this is new, yes? I have this really weird feeling about the slides. They, they look really overly familiar. 
Um, that's why I get a little nervous. Uh, all right. Literally having one of my better days. Um, all right, so categorical distribution. Um, let me run this cell. Uh, hopefully you got the lecture. Uh, I think I have a fair amount already kind of pre-typed for you today. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we already know is we read a table out of that file. It's the movies from 2017 and how they did, um, you know, in terms of dollars. Um, and then what we can do is we can look at uh, kind of converting it to a more usable number, right? So that it's in terms of millions. And we can do our, uh, uh, what do we call it? Horizontal bar chart. Um, and because it's a categorical value, right? So we don't want to use something like a line plot or a scatter plot. We want to look at it in terms of, uh, you know, as these categories, okay? Oops, wrong button. All right. And then we can also do, you know, kind of things based on the categories, but we can do another cool thing, which I'll kind of jump a little bit. Let me just see if I miss anything. Nope. Okay. So one of the cool things we can do is if if we kind of want to almost get almost like a different category, we want to get, we want to simplify a category maybe. So in this case, we want to know more information about the studios themselves, not about the individual movies, right? So a whole bunch of movies were made. There's a, I don't remember what the list was, but they were only made by 13 plus 10, 23 different studios. So we want to group them together into each studio. And so we have this cool function called group um, and you pass it which column you want to group it by, okay? And group by is a term that you'll hear a lot, but that way we just get now a count of the studios that are of the movies that each studio produced. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I don't talk about it a whole lot, right? But this grouping function, you're gonna use a lot in like homeworks and projects and stuff like that. So definitely take note of it, right? Is that you wanna be able to group things and how you're grouping things and then the result. Because if you notice at no point in either of these lines, right? Did I add a column called count, right? When I called group, it inserted a new column called count. It wasn't on the table at all. And then inserted the values for the group, right, or the count of the groups. Does that make sense? Or the count of the movies, I guess, in each group. So, but if we look back up here, we see that there's 200 rows, right? Or 200 movies. And so what we expect is that if we add all of these counts together, we will get um, 200, right? Does that make sense? All right. So how would I add all of those together? Anybody? Just to cross check my own work. Yeah, keep going. You got any more? All right, so you can say sum, but now you have just that column. Can't type distribution. Um, but we have this new column that's just count, right? So I can just sum up the values in there, and assuming I typed everything correctly, I should get 200. Okay, so I know I've said this before, I will say it again, I will say it many more times. It is always a good idea to kind of cross check work you did to make sure the result you got is what you actually expected. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that makes sure I didn't make some stupid mistake, which, as you know, I make all the time. So there you go. All right, so let me see. Just want to see what my next thing is. Okay, so. If I have my bar chart by studio, okay? So this is how many studios do the work. Okay, well, so this is useful, right? It shows the whole thing, but obviously it might be more useful if it was arranged maybe highest to lowest or you know lowest to highest, whichever way I wanna look at it. So can anybody tell me how I would modify this statement to print it in a way, let's say from the most movies for the studio to the smallest studio 
All right, the smallest number of moons. All right, what's the first method I need? Yeah, somebody over here. Sort. That's correct. All right, and then give me one second. We type sort. All right, and then what do I need next? Does the name of the column then descending descending the tree? Right. So I see the name of the column, which is our new column called count, which was added magically by that method. As you can tell, I keep harping on it. I'm not the biggest fan of things, uh, of methods that modify uh, something I'm using without being really explicit about it um, because the assumption. All right, so hopefully you all can see that. But so now I have the sort correctly. Now what do I do? Okay, how do I do that? There's an easier way. Because we're in class, and so I'm going to do the shortest in the shortest shorthand I can do. Use the bar H. Right. So I can use the method directly because the result of the sort is a table itself. So I can let's studio. And so now I've got the sort I want, right? And so this is going to show the information in the way that I, you know, wanted to do. All right, Let's see. Then I think we go back to the slides and then we're going to talk about numerical distributions again, kind of quickly. All right, so bar charts very commonly used. Um, one axis is categorical and one numerical. We, like I said, in this class, because of the projector, we use the horizontal chart all the time. Um, but I would actually say vertical is much more common. Um, so, but either way, one is going to be categorical and one is going to be numerical, right? It'll either be the X or the Y, depending on which way the bars are, are going. All right. And then, so we have this handy new group method, um, like I said, which, which is useful in a lot of different places. Um, the distribution of a variable column describes the frequencies of its different values. Okay. So like how often something is happening kind of. Um, and then bar charts can display the distribution of a categorical variable, one bar for each category, the length of the bar is the count of individuals in that category, and you can choose the order of the bars using something like sort. Um, but if you notice, right, uh, the chart itself can't do much, right? It takes its input and does it based on that. So that's why you got to do the sort on the table, the grouping on the table, whatever, and then you can do a chart after. It actually kind of makes sense because let's say you want to do multiple charts against the same data set, you may want to kind of save that off with a particular sort, with your new count field, with whatever. And then you can say, oh, I'm going to do a bar horizontal chart and I'm going to do a vertical one and maybe I'm going to do something else, but that way I can keep operating on it without having to uh, change it every time. All right. So question. Uh, got anyone else? All right, and then what's the best graph for the categorical variables? This should be easy. Oh, one other note I wanted to make about the project, as you may have discovered, right? Some of the lectures that are taking place while the project is out there are needed for doing the project. So you can either like read ahead in the book if you want to kind of finish the project or earlier or, you know, kind of wait for some of the lectures uh, before, you know, kind of if something does, doesn't make any sense because you haven't seen it before. So it's just they kind of run in parallel. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. I'm not sure how obvious that was to people. All right, get those answers in. And what's it doing? All right, so bar graph, we have 100% uh, correct response rate. That is very nice. All right, so now we talk about distribution of numerical variables. And we're going to start with another quick demo, maybe. Cross your fingers. All right. OK, so.
I have a, I have a bug in my cheat sheet that uh, I thought I had fixed. <laughs> um, okay, so what I want to know is is like of these top movies, how old are they, right? So how do I go about that? If I wanted to get a column of ages. Um, A column of ages. What what would I do? Any ideas? Uh, you could sort by the column of like a year that's around which it's like and subtract it from the current year. Okay, why do you need to sort it? Oh wait, never mind. Not sort it, but just like indicate that you're choosing that column. Right. Okay. So we would just subtract the column from the present year, right? So, oops. So correct me if I get the year wrong, it is certainly plausible. Um, and then I give it which year I want or which uh, column I want. Now I have a column on my tabletop movies that is actually the age. And so now I can uh, print it out, right? And so now we see the ages off to the side. Um, maybe for convenience, it might have been nice to sort it, but it wasn't required, right? All right, so let me just see what my next slide is. Yeah, so I'm actually going to go back to the slides because I think it's easier to talk about this with a picture first. Okay, so has anybody ever heard the term binning? Anybody British? or with uh, learning English uh, with a British source? Anyone? All right, what does binning mean? Throw, uh, throw something in the trash. So if, uh, you know, if you, if you speak British English uh, and, you know, and so there's a lot of other countries that learn British English, uh, the slang term for throwing something in the trash is called binning. Um, and so it may help you remember this, because what we mean by bidding is by putting things in bins or in buckets. Uh, it's funny, actually, New England, you know, like the Boston area or whatever, um, we actually tend to inherit a lot of our slang and that kind of stuff from England because New England is so old. Uh, and so, like, my kids call a trash can a bin, okay? Um, you know, they also call a, a water fountain a bubbler, for example. Um, although I don't know where that one comes from, so... Yeah, you know, your mileage may vary. Um, but so binning is what we call it. And basically what we're gonna do is, this is a scenario where I have numbers, okay? So it's a numerical range like this, okay? But I don't wanna do a number line for some reason. What I wanna do is try to figure it out in terms of categories. And it was funny, I was uh, thinking about this this morning. Um, I can't come up with a good story for these numbers. Maybe it's, uh, I was like, a temperature to cook meat to, you know, or something. Um, except if you're cooking meat that high, it's going to be bad, and you should go back to cooking school. Um, so, you know, it's kind of it's kind of tough. Um, but so I need to rearrange like two different numbers that might be more useful. Um, but another example I thought of or and heard before was, um, you know, if you go around in a restaurant, right, and ask everyone their ages, okay, you don't necessarily care about like a like a line graph of the ages right, or a scatter plot of the ages is only gonna answer certain kinds of questions. What you might wanna to try to figure out is something like, are the, um, does this restaurant skew young, right, or skew older, right? Which you can kind of get from like a line or a scatter, but it might be better if you kind of said, hey, let's put them in the age categories and then we can, we can bin them together and look at it that way. And we'll see some more with that example. But here, um, I was very impressed myself for doing a build slide, so hopefully it's going to work. All right. So the way we're going to do this um, is this first number is 188, right? Um, and so that means that we get a you know a chip, a thing, right, that drops into the bucket 185 to 190. That makes sense. Okay. So then the next one's going to go in what bucket? The next one is 170. Which bucket is that going to go in? 170 to 175. And look at that, my build slide even works correctly. So 189, where's that gonna go? 
185 to 190. Yeah, feel free, just kind of shut them out. That's cool um, because they get trickier as we go. All right, so 163, where's that go? Right, okay. And then where does uh, 183 go? All right, it's like there's like a low mutter. All right, uh, all right, and then 171. Right, okay, that was the easy one. So now 185, where's that going to go? All right, raise your right hand if you think it goes in the 185 to 190 bucket. Raise your left hand if you think it goes in the 180 to 185 bucket. All right, let's see. Oh, it goes in the 185 bucket. Why is that? Right, so the bottom is inclusive, the top is exclusive, right? So 185 is part of that one, not part of this one, because it's exclusive on this side and inclusive on that side. I don't know why I made the farthest one away, the prime example of that, to make it as hard as possible to point it out. All right, so 168 is an easy one, and then 173 is an easy one. Um, and now we have a demo. I think I actually got ahead of myself there, but you get the idea. Um, there's that window, there's this window. So going back to our movie ages, right? Um, so when you're doing this kind of binning, right? What's the first thing I need to figure out? Right, if we go back to this slide for one second, what information do I need with these numbers? For the bins, the lower bound. The lower bound, yes. What's the other thing? The upper bound. And then what's the last thing? Uh, uh, how about over there? The range. So the lower bound, and the upper bound is going to give you the whole range. Is that what you mean? But there's another thing that could be called a range that is really what I'm looking for. Any other ideas? All right, how about you in the back right there? The size of the bins. The size of the bins. That's why I was kind of like, this range or that range? Um, okay, so in this case, right, the lower bound, we're, you know, we can't see some of the numbers, but we're saying it's 160, upper bound was whatever it was, like 200 or something. Uh, and then the bin size is five. Okay, so how do we get the lower bound and the upper bound? To be pretty easy. Remember, I have ages. Max will give me the, the upper bound. And then, first. And then min. Am I typing? Yes. All right. I remember my comma trick. It's just so I can print it out and see what I'm doing. All right. And so what we see is the max age is 101 and the minimum age is five. Okay. I really probably need to get a, a more recent data set uh, so that the youngest one isn't already five years old. Um, Okay, so the next thing I want to do is do that bin size. And so the way we indicate the bin size when we're doing this stuff, we're going to do it later, is we create an array of each of the uh, bins, basically. So I signed myself up for a lot of typing on this one. Um, so we do make array, and we're going to say, let's. No, it's sort of five. Um, 10, 15, 25, 40, 65, and then 105. Okay, so a couple of notes here. Actually, I'm going to make this four just to make it the example. Okay, so you're not required to make the start and stop the same as the min and the max, right? It can be outside of that. You want to be generally close because of the problem we talked about at the very beginning of this lecture, right? Which is that if you if you blow them out, right, it'll it'll appear, it'll kind of give a visual in, like information that might be different than what is true. Okay, like the takeaway, if there's a whole bunch, you know, empty space might give you a different impression. The other thing is that. The bins, as you notice, don't necessarily need to be the same size. Okay. Again, this can be a place where you can be disingenuous about it. And so you got to be careful when you do something like that. But in this case, that's what we're going to do because it's going to show the things I want to show. All right. So then 
Now I have an array of my bins. It's, uh, you know, it's got these various bins in it. And now I'm going to actually get the data in bins, okay? And conveniently enough, we have a method called bin, intuitively enough. Then we have age, and then we pass it uh, the bin we want to use, okay? And so the way we do that is like um, the descending, uh, we give a name, oops, that's supposed to be an equal sign, sorry. Um, let's finish typing. All right, so we give it a, a name uh, parameter here. So it's called bin and we make it equal to my bins, okay? And so my bins is the thing we established up there. Uh, and now it'll be binned that way. Uh, assuming I don't have typos. <coughs> Oh, sorry. This is bins. Um, okay. So, okay. So in that first bin, we have 25 of our movies. The second bin, which starts at 10, uh, we have 16, 15, uh, it's size there at 15, we have 40, uh, 42, etc. Right. Um, and so we have zero in 105, which I thought we had one, but maybe I misread it. Um, okay, but long story short, we have now items in all our bins. Okay, or we have our our all of our movies in various bins or the appropriate bin. So then we can move on. And and then so just as a again, like I said, I always like to do cross checking. So this is just the sum of the column. And just to make sure we come back with the same number of movies we started with, okay, we still have 200, so that seems right. Um, and then, so what we can do though next, or yeah, sorry. Um, so, but let's say we want to arrange the bins a little bit more easily, right? We don't want to type them all in. Um, we instead want to go from our, you know, kind of starting point to our ending point and we want bins that are, call it 25 movies each, uh, uh, ages each, okay? So how, what would be the best way to do that, do you think? Yeah, so we can use A to range, right? With, and we could just pass, Let's say R. All right, that, this is not helpful uh, for what I'm about to do. I, I think maybe I uh, missed a line or something. Um, but so let me just uh, drop this here and do this. And so now I can say top movies bin age. And then now I can assign bins, I can actually sign it to np.a range, except I can give, let's just do the same ones we were doing before, um, and 25. And so now we have, it's not quite the same thing as when I typed it in by hand, right? Because those were variable size bins, but we can very easily get to a set of bins that uh, just exist. Um, and then, I wonder why I had. Yeah, I don't know why I had that as an example. Um, so I think it was actually supposed to be on this one here. Um, but long story short, you can kind of just do the bins. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you was you can actually pass it no bins, and it will try to guess a good distribution of bins. Okay. I would say, you know, like for the sake of like homeworks and labs and projects and stuff like that, this, you know, we might want to use this, but I would say in real world, like most of the time, you're going to want to have some input into that, right? Because it's going to use the data to try to figure out the size of the bins, which if you take my earlier example with the restaurant, 
if the place skews younger, right, versus skews older, that's going to give you a weird um, number of bins, most likely, right? So it's worth taking a try, see what it thinks, right? And if it thinks that you're doing something very different than what it's doing, make sure you're doing the right thing, you know? But I would say commonly you would want to have, define your own set. All right, so now we will, we have another slide. Let's see. Oh yeah. All right, so here we have another question. And oops. all right, the upper bound is the blank of the next blank, the next bin. What is blank? How many B words? Uh, answer D is incorrect. This is F Y. Like 8,000 pieces of chalk on this podium. I'm not quite sure why. All right. Get those answers in. All right, now I'm closing it. All right. Let's see what the responses were. So it looks like most people got lower bound, uh, which is correct. Excuse me, phrasing the questions a little rough. So, you know, if you if you misunderstood the phrasing, that might have led to the incorrect answer, but the lower bound is what you wanted here for the word blank. All right. So now do we actually want to talk about those things. Yes, I think so. Let me just check. I hate when I disagree with past self. Yeah, uh, let's actually, let's talk about histograms first. All right, so. And I may, I may discover during this that past self was correct, which is always awkward, but all right. So the first thing we do is, remember we have the bins that we created earlier, we just called it my bins. So that's the same. Um, and so we have, our data is binned um, when we use a histogram. Okay, so hist is short for histogram. Um, and, you know, so we never like to type the whole thing. So that's what it is. Um, and so, yeah, I may, may be agreeing with past self. Let's see. So, what we talk about here is we can look at now the actual uh, kind of graph here to figure out the data that is in it. Right. And this gives us a sense of the distribution of the you know movies over time. Okay. Uh, as produced or just the movies over time. So the movies in this list, we have relatively few, right? That are more than whatever that is, the top of that mountain was 65, more than 65 years old. Um, we have a few that are between 40 and 60. And we have a whole bunch that are in the 20 range right and then even more in the whatever that is like less than less than 10 um because if you tell here it's actually another empty bar here um in fact i think yeah there's actually another empty bar here like vertical bar um so these are both zero uh sometimes i don't really like how this prints because it's a little hard to tell that there's another bin here um but you can tell if you kind of look at the uh, cross live lines um but so what this can show us, right, is this can answer that question about like, okay, clearly movies were like getting more popular, right? More people were starting to go or whatever, like, or more or better movies were getting made. We're not exactly sure why this is, but we definitely know that the number of those movies that are in that top grossing categories or whatever 
uh, are more recent. There's probably something here for inflation, but uh, the adjusted column I think was controlling for inflation. So theoretically, this should be in, in roughly real dollars. Um, so that you know the fact that dollars are worth what more? No, worth less now than they were here. Um, wait, am I saying that backwards? I might be saying that backwards. I can't think. Of it. Whatever. Point being is that um, you know. The, or the number of people is another characteristic, right? There's a lot more people living in the US, for example, now than there was 100 years ago, right? That makes sense. So you're gonna have more, if the same percentage of the population is going to movies, you're gonna have more dollars spent on those movies. So that could be another reason. But the point being is that we just know that these this set of movies, the distribution tends to be skewed towards more recent, okay? Um, and then, you know, and so if we take that restaurant example, right, if we had put all the patrons into bins, we could say, oh, you know, if it's, if it's closer to that end, then it, that restaurant skews younger, but if it's closer to this end, that restaurant skews older, right? So this variance can be really useful. Um, and let's see what else I was going to show you here. So, but as you might imagine, right, this is a little difficult to read because we have our bin sizes are of different sizes. So it might be better to use our, um, like the MPA range mechanism to get that way, in, or to get the histogram um, more simply. So in order to do that, we just do the same thing that I did a few minutes ago. Um, and we're going to do NPA range zero, ten, uh, except I'm going to do a distribution like I'm only going to do 10 years at a time. Um, and then we're going to tell it year. And assuming I type that correctly. So, yeah, so what I just wanted to kind of point out. Try to show like a counter example. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have a counter example. Um, but this unit equals year is what's making this show up as year like this. Okay. So, um, yeah, so you can kind of add information in there as well. Um, but now we have a distribution that is kind of a little more sane, a little easier to read, right? Uh, we still have that empty bin. Oh, no, we don't have an empty bin here anymore um, because our first unit is zero to 10 uh, and our first and the other one was zero to five. Um, and then we, we have what looks like uh, probably, let's see, that, that would be like 90, right? So there's a bin there that's missing, okay? Um, so you can tell kind of, oh, actually there's two bins missing. So there's 90 to 100 and then there's 100 to 110. I thought there were two. So that's kind of where you can see them. And one of the other things that I find a little confusing about this is these tax marks, right, that show you the grid are not necessarily the same as the separators between the bars and the graph. Does that make sense? Right, so this one, for example, right there, this is 40 to 50 and 50 to 60, okay? Um, when you have more real estate, right, you can also do more labeling so that it's a little clearer what's going on. Um, but hopefully you get the idea. Uh, but I know a trap I fall into is that I see these vertical lines and I think these are the bins, right? Not these. All right. I'm gonna skip the next one. Okay, then, yeah, actually, so, well, I'll show it to you there, it's just not like a lot of work. Um, but so we can also, as we said before, um, we can just let it figure out the bins. And in this case, we'll probably get something more sane, okay? Um, and so I just let it figure out the bins, I didn't give it anything, and it actually did come out to be almost the same. Um, be nice if I knew for sure what the last hatch mark was. Um, but there should be, this should be like 100 to call it 110. 
Um, and there's, no, that can't be right. So this must be 100. So this is the last one likely in this set of bins. Um, there's probably a way I could print the, the actual bins out as well, but I don't remember off the top of my head, so I'd have to look it up. Um, but the point being is that it actually did a better job in a sense of trying to do the 10 year bins than I did because I gave, I gave kind of too many bins, um, whereas it's gonna figure it out a little bit better. Or let's, let's say differently, uh, it's gonna figure out a little more carefully, right? If I'd been more careful in looking at the numbers, I could have done the same. All right. So, oops. All right, so the next thing we care about is looking at the percentage of, of movies that are in each bin, okay? But so let's, instead of trying to read it off the graph, and I probably should have given you more of this already written, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new column to our bin data table, right? Called percent. And basically I'm gonna calculate the percentage of that bin um, across the movies, right? Uh, so that is going to actually, let me just print it, just here, all right? Um, and so this is the percentage of each bin. This is going back to our original bins, right? Um, and so 12 and a half percent are in, in that first bin. Um, and then, well, right, the first bin, and then, you know, 8%, 20%, et cetera. So I could have used the percent formatter and gotten like a natural percent sign, but, um, you know, it is column labeled. So that's kind of how much are in each one. And so, that is where I'm going to switch to the slides. So we can talk about the area principle. Okay. All right, so when we talk about area, right? So the thing I showed you before uh, was zooming in, okay? That's not the same thing as what we're talking about here. This is that, <clears throat> this is a very common like advertising technique, right? Is that, is this little battery meter thing 100% big, bigger than this battery meter? No, right? Because if you look at it, it kind of looks like it is because it's just kind of stretched vertically and sort of horizontally. But in fact, I think if I recall correctly, I think it's a quarter, okay? Because you kind of imagine if you plop this, not quite a quarter, but if you plop this into this picture, right? There's like four of them will fit. But this is a, it's such a common technique that a lot of people will kind of see this picture and like read it as 100% bigger, okay? Because it kind of looks like it, even though it's not. So another way to visualize it is that the area should be proportional to the values that they represent. And the A's and the B's and the C's going across there are kind of annoying. So if we have A, right, the way we represent 100% bigger is B, okay? Not C, because C is not 100% bigger. It's probably, you know, I'm estimating, but let's say it's actually, uh, it's actually three times, right? I can fit three of these or maybe four even. Yeah, trying to do my geometry in my head. Um, but I can do four of them in that one over there, right? Because I can put one here, one here, one upside down here and one on top. Okay? So that's important. Um, and we're gonna talk more about it in a minute. Um, and so a histogram is a chart that displays the distribution of a numerical variable or attribute. So in other words, we've turned a numerical value into a categorical value. By using these bins, the bins are now categories or a set inventory, right? Um, and that's where it uses these bins. Um, so you'll hear them called um, bins or buckets is another common term, um, but you know they're kind of used interchangeably. I would say the more formal one is bin. Okay, um, 
And I used to have a good picture of, uh, you know, like what I think of bins, because I'm not British, is like everybody at the airport, right? And the thing you have to put all your stuff in before you go through security. Apparently I traveled far too much, but that's what I think of as a bin, is those gray bins that you see in airport security. Um, and then it uses the area principles. So the area of each bar is the percent of individuals in the corresponding bin. Right, and this is important. Okay, and we have a question. Hopefully, a lot of the questions are generally fairly obvious. Wait, is it open or closed? Oh, it's closed. There we go. So, what is the area principle? All right, get those answers in. This one should be really obvious. Uh, also, if you haven't done the attendance yet, it looks like only like 50% of the class has done attendance. So just make sure you grab that and fill it in. Um, I don't think the number changed, but if you, you know, if you're unsure, hit it again. All right, closing. There we go. So areas to be proportional to the values they represent. And that is correct. All right. So let's talk about um, yeah, let's talk about density. Uh, so the histogram axes, okay? So axes is the x and y, right? The plural of axis is axes. I don't know what language that's from. Probably Latin. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, by default, hist uses a scale, norm equals true, that ensures the area of the chart sums to 100%. So this is one of those uh, named, very, uh, named arguments or named parameters where it's called normed. So by default, it will be true, but you can change it. Uh, generally, I would say that's not something you want to do, but you know, maybe you'll come up with a reason. Uh, the area of each bar is a percentage of the whole. The horizontal axis is a number line. For example, years in the movie stuff. Uh, and the bin sizes don't have to be equal in size. And then the vertical axis is a rate, okay? Or percent per year. So like the, the number of, or the percentage of movies per year. Uh, there's, uh, let's, let's, this is a very hard thing to phrase. Um, so it's the percent of this set of movies that are in that uh, bin. Right. Oh, I was not expecting a question. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the histograms bin sizes blank have to be equal to each other. What is blank? Should it be bin sizes don't have to be equal to each other, or they do have to be equal to each other? Right, those answers in. All right, closing. And the correct answer is don't. Okay, so bin sizes can be completely arbitrary. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, it is <clears throat> much more common to have them be equal, but it is not a requirement, okay? Um, it depends a lot on what the data is you're trying to understand, whether it makes oops, whether it makes sense or not. All right, so a tiny little bit of algebra. So how do we calculate the height? So the 40 to 65 bin, okay, contains 51 out of 200 movements. Um, and so 52, out of 200 is 25 and a half percent. Okay, does that make sense? Um, you know, 50 would be 50%, right? Oh, sorry, 25%. Uh, 
Uh, the bin is 65 minus 40, so 25 years wide. So the way we figure out how big the, the graphical bar will be is we divide the 25 and a half percent by 25 years. So we get 1.02% per year. So that's how we draw that picture. Okay. We'll go into a little bit more with an example or like calculating it, hopefully today. All right. Again, slides will be distributed. So this is definitely available to you. Um, okay, so height measures density. So this is kind of the inverse of what we just said, which is that the percent in the bin divided by the height or divided by the width of the bin will give you the height. So in other words, if you know the height, you can also figure out the width and you know the height and the width, you can figure out how many, what percentage of things are in that bin. Okay, which then you can then in turn figure out how many things that you have if that's what your goal is. So the height measures the percent of data in the bin relative to the amount of space in the bin. So as you might imagine, right, because of the way a histogram is drawn, it can't just be flat, right? Like I can't show 200 movie items, right? I need to do it in percentages so that the graph like fits on the screen. So this is the technique we use to basically uh, kind of uh, rationalize the data into one simple kind of unified way of looking at it. Does that make sense? So it's a, there's it's definitely like a little complex, but it's if you think about it in terms of, you know, let's say we had 200,000 movies, right? We definitely can't fit those in a reasonable, you know, size graph. So we need to do a, a little bit of mathematical, you know, kind of uh, making it more uniform to actually fit it into a graph. So this is how we do it. Um, so height measures the crowdedness or density. So if you go back to that earlier picture when I was doing the build and asking which one goes in what, the density is basically how many of those chips are in that each bucket, right? Or in each bin. Uh, and so that term density, what we mean is like how many, how tightly are things crammed into that bin? As you imagine, right? If we had 200,000 movies, um, each bin would be a much higher density. Right? There's a lot more little points inside the bin. Um, whereas if with the 200 movies, it'd be a much less dense, okay, overall. And then the way you compare each bin to each other is by comparing their relative densities to each other, okay? Because it wouldn't make any sense to compare the density of one of those, uh, you know, bar graph, uh, one of those bars between the 200 movie uh, histogram and the 200,000 movie histogram. Right, the densities would be wildly different. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, and then the units are percent per unit on the horizontal axis. So the, the you know the horizontal axis um, and how much you know those bins are. All right, and then the last little bit of this. Uh, so the area measures percent. So the area of the bar equals the percent in the bin, and which is also equal to the height times the width of the bin. That should really be an asterisk to make that a little clearer. How many individuals in the bin? You use area. How crowded is the bin? You use height. Okay. So I think we have time. We're a little tight. So maybe we'll start with this next time. But let's talk about it if we can. Okay, so, oops, let's really rejigger this so it's not the end of a lecture. Um, so how would we calculate the percent of the movies in uh, the 40 to 65 B? Okay, so we basically back reference that little equation and we turn it into Python. And so the way we do it is we, First, give it some place to go. So we're just going to say percent equals, then end data. And then we're going to say, okay, we're going to use with where. Oops. Okay, so this is going to give us all of the rows in our table of bin data, right? Where the value of bin is 40, okay? 
And then we're going to ask for a particular column, which is going to be percent. And then we're going to take the first element off of that by calling it zero. Okay, and actually, let me just print that. Okay, so let me just do this. Oops, come on. It's all kind of time. Okay, so I just want to point out that we're going and getting one row, right? In the bin data, right? Because it was each of them. And we're going to go and find that one percentage value. But we still get an array back. Okay. So we still get as if we had a bunch, but we only got one. So we still have to get it out of the array. That's why we use the item zero over there. So just kind of keep that in mind that if you ask for something that could be many things, you will probably get a holder for many things. And then you have to go and pull the one thing out of it rather than the one thing direct. Does that make sense? All right. So hopefully you'll remember this when we're talking about it. Okay. So then we need the width, which is very easy to figure out, right? Is width is equal to 65 minus 40, because that's the size of the bin, right? And then we can figure out what the height of the actual um, bar should be, assuming I can think correctly, by doing the width, or sorry, the percent divided by the width. And that is an entirely different word. Okay, and so this should be the thing we see in the picture, right? It should be the 1.12. Uh, line in the graphic that we did before, but it's not that one, it's this one, yeah. So as you can see, it is about 1.12, okay? That's where this line falls. So now you know that it's the height of this should be 1.12, and you can reverse it, which is often the more useful thing if you're looking at this graph. Obviously, sometimes it can be a little hard to tell that that's 1.12 versus 1.1, but you can at least get in the right neighborhood. Okay, does that make sense? All right, I'll try to cover this again uh, in a future lecture um, as well. Um, yeah, and I'll save I'll save the last question. Like, don't worry about the last one. I'll try to cover that in the next lecture. Um, all right, any questions? I'm giving an index zero and that amounts to actually zero on the hidden data part if you're calling it a zero. Is there yeah. a very likely? Yeah, I'm just trying to scroll. Uh, most likely, you're not asking for the column. And I'll look at it out. Uh, any other questions? For the problem, the way Brentfield works is one person submits it and attaches the other people. Okay, so 